Salutations, respected viewers. This is George from Ireland. Um, this video is about Sinn Féin's hypocrisy on the Brexit issue. So, uh, over two years ago, uh, the majority of people in the United Kingdom voted to leave the European Union. 52% voted for that. And uh, the Remain campaign vociferously emphasised that if this decision was making, it may, may, made, it would never ever be revisited. Anyway, Sinn Féin's all about self-determination. Ourselves alone. That's what their name means. They want to be isolationist. And so what they originally wanted, well, Arthur Griffith was that, was that dual monarchy, King of Ireland, King of Great Britain, same person. But anyway, from 1917, it was this. It was uh, the whole of Ireland to leave the United Kingdom and be totally separate as a republic. That's not a viewpoint I share, but I recognise that it's cogent. And of course, they were dead against the European Union to begin with, or the European Economic Community, as it was prior to that. Um, so Sinn Féin advocates for this uh, mythical 32-county republic, which has never existed. I think at the moment they admit that it doesn't exist, but they pretended for a long time that it did, because of the 1918 election, as there no election has since ever counted. Um, of course, nations aren't eternal. They change, they unite, they break up, they reunite, they join with another nation. So um, uh, Ireland was a set of semi-independent kingdoms till the 12th century, uh, and it's, it's changed so much. Isaac Butt, the man who founded the Home Rule Party, he uh, said uh, we had a Siamese union with Great Britain, like Siamese twins, as in cut them apart and they'll both die. And he'd said that since uh, 1169, we'd been a dependency on England. So we've been connected to our neighbor, to our kith and our kin across the Irish Sea. Um, anyway, so Sinn Féin are obviously disregarding much of Irish history that they find distasteful. They will overlook the annals. But uh, they now decry Brexit, uh, which is astonishing. They ought to be in favor of national self-determination. Now, national self-determination is a problematic expression because well, who's the nation? Is Ireland one nation or two? Or maybe Northern Ireland's a subset of the British nation and so on. It's not um, as clear cut as people would have you believe, as Sinn Féin would have you believe, or indeed as British nationalists would have you believe. And by the way, I count myself as a British nationalist. I'm Irish and I regard us, the Irish from the whole of Ireland. We're one of the peoples of the British Isles. But I realise that um, the word nation define, sorry, defies any simple definition, and um, it's not cut and dried at all. These are grey areas. Nations are not stringently defined in either time or space. Um, and uh, Gerard Adams, erstwhile president of Sinn Féin, described Brexit as a hostile act. A vote as a hostile act? Well, he'd know something about really hostile acts. Um, democracy is hostile? Well, it's staggering. His party pretended to believe in democracy for a long time. Now, it's true that in Northern Ireland, most people didn't vote for Brexit. The United Kingdom's got over 65 million people. It would be astonishing if exactly the same percentage voted for Brexit all over in Northern Ireland, uh, uh, Scotland, Wales and England. Um, so uh, Sinn Féin has agitated for um, uh, there to be another border poll. Well, that's odd because Europhiles were often saying 1975 that that uh, referendum about staying in the EEC, as it then was, that issue must never ever be reopened. <clears throat> and uh, they were also saying that if they won in the Remain referendum in 2016, again, that that issue would never be put to the people again. But um, Northern Ireland had a referendum on its position in the United Kingdom, 1973. Not many people know this, 58% turnout, 98% of those who cast ballots voted to stay within the United Kingdom. <clears throat> Why was it such a high percentage? Because nationalists boycotted it. Well, that's their fault. They had a chance. What, what if Leavers had boycotted the Brexit referendum and Leavers would have lost? Tough. You had a chance, you chose not to vote, that's it. Um, so why should it ever be revisited? Now, I'm not an absolutist in these things. I'm not totally against referenda being rerun, but there ought to be a decent interval, interval a generational interval, um, 20 years at least. Um, now, you might point out Scotland has voted about its relationship with the remainder of the United Kingdom thrice in recent years, the March 1979 referendum, the September 1997 one, 
and indeed the um, September 2014 one. So, um, but the thing is, it was a different question each time. It was devolution on a certain format in 79. It was a different kind of devolution with tax varying powers in 1997, and it was leaving the UK altogether in 2014. Um, anyway, so the 1918 election, Sinn Féin, think this sacred moment, because it's the best election for them ever, they won 73 out of the 106 Irish constituencies. But bear in mind, 25 of those were won unopposed. Sinn Féin had never contested election until 1916, and then two years later, they're winning loads of seats unopposed. The Home Rule Party, nobody else even dared to stand against them in 25 constituencies. Well, I can tell you an awful lot about this, but we don't have time. There was a lot of um, intimidation by Sinn Féin. Their violence was notorious already, breaking up other people's meetings, severely beating people up, murdering, indeed, another uh, a Home Rule Party campaigner in County Donegal, and on and on, a bit of personation um, as well, bogus votes cast, including my children. Not a huge number of fraudulent votes, I don't think. So there's a Wikipedia article about this and said, well, what percentage did they really get? Because in the actual election, Sinn Féin got about 48% of the votes cast. Now, admittedly, that's because some constituencies where they were quite popular, no votes were cast at all because they, they had the only candidate. But there is a Wikipedia article about it and a link, and they try to project what share of the vote they would have got, looking at the constituencies that were not contested and saying, well, what's the nearest constituency that was contested and extrapolating from that one onto the other one. And it works out that they think that Sinn Féin would have got about 51% of the vote in that election. Um, and bear in mind, obviously, the, the rest of the vote would be divided between the Home Rule Party and the LC Unionists more or less evenly. Um, so isn't that astonishing? Sinn Féin getting 51% of the vote, but thinking 52% of the vote for Brexit is somehow invalid. Um, we should be allowed to reconsider decisions. Well, we could be allowed to reconsider leaving the UK. So it was um, a staggering of the way many of the arguments against Brexit would apply to Ireland's situation a century ago as well. There's no plan, we're told, about Brexit. Another thing is, what are your particular objections? Well, about Irish Republicanism a century ago, what were the objections? What policies did we want to do differently? Which law did we want to introduce? Which extant law did we wish to repeal? I don't know of any. Did we want to increase tax or reduce it? There was nothing about that. Did we want to be socialist or not? Well, there were some hints in that direction in Sinn Féin's document, the Democratic Programme. The language, they weren't crystal clear about making Irish a co-official language. Notably, the proclamation of the Irish Republic in 1916 was uh, printed exclusively in English. Uh, most of those who signed it, well, almost everyone of them was a Gael Gore, who was high up in the Irish volunteers at the time. And I know Sinn Féin didn't actually launch the Easter Rising, some of the people who signed the proclamation were Sinn Féin, as only subsequently it was labelled Sinn Féin Rebellion in Dublin, almost accidentally, I think, in the Irish Times, and then somehow Sinn Féin got associated with um, the Irish volunteers. So more of these questions about Brexit. What are we going to do about trade? We could apply that to Ireland's situation around 1918. How about uh, defence? Our military will be puny. What are we going to do? Like he's asking about Brexit. Well, we'll be outside the EU's uh, defensive umbrella. They won't share intelligence. What are we going to do about immigration? We can't get enough immigrants. Or in Ireland, we, were like, we won't have a place to emigrate to so much. The United States was no longer taking just about anybody. Because prior to that, Irish people virtually always got into the United States. Um, the thing is, these arguments apply to Ireland's situation in 1921. A fortiori. Um, but uh, Sinn Féin sees these as rocks in the road about the United Kingdom living in the UK. There have been many canards put around about the uh, border, uh, it won't work and so on. I think it's to some extent a negotiating tactic by, um, by the European Union to raise the spectre of a recrudescence of conflict, to then wring more concessions out of London, um, which is dangerous because it could be a self-fulfilling prophecy and dissident Republicans without licking their lips about the possibility of a new campaign of terrorism. So no person in their right mind wants that. But by the way, cars are occasionally stopped on either side of the border. So currency, what were we gonna do in 1921? Sinn Féin didn't say, oh, by the way, we'll use sterling for the next 50 years. We'll print it on different paper, but we'll just, but it will be sterling and the interest rates will be set in London. We'll have absolutely no say in those anymore um, or on money supply. Thing is, um, uh, yeah, we could have printed we could have printed separate banknotes anyway. 
prior to 1921, like Scotland does, like Northern Ireland does now. They say Ulster Bank or Bank of Ireland or Northern Bank. Um, so we'd have to follow rules but have no say in them. That applied to Ireland a century ago because we left the United Kingdom, did over 90% of our trade with the United Kingdom, almost all the rest of the rest of the British Empire. Remember, Canada, Australia, and the rest was part of the British Empire. So it's staggering that Sinn Féin should be so anti-Brexit now. They were real nationalists. They want the Republic of Ireland to leave the UK, sorry, to leave the EU as well. They want to be united with Great Britain, but they do want to be united with the likes of Bulgaria, because we've got so much more in common with them, which is preposterous, not being anti-Bulgarian, but clearly we have so much in common with our cousins and friends across the Irish Sea, and not so much with Bulgaria. Bulgaria is not bad, it's just fairly far away and, and quite different. That's all. But anyway, it could easily be resolved. We just uh, leave, uh, leave, well, we just leave the EU, dissolve the Republic, rejoin the UK, perhaps on a devolved basis, and that's that, and then we'll have our united island.